uh, guy that we had to try to talk into playing football a little bit. A couple years ago, saw him outside during fun day playing flag football, touch football with everybody you could see. He was fast. He was an athlete. Last, Last year, got him to try playing football for the first time in his life. He improved the entire season. Last game of the year last year, caught a touchdown pass. Once he got that feeling and he was hooked, we had him. He actually loved the game. And spent the off season at least until we shut down, working out every day, mentoring kids, other kids. All he's about is working out and getting better. This year he came out much more improved, much more confident in his abilities, much more aggressive than he was uh, in last year. And so our goal was to remove that fear from him by the end of the year. And I would have to say probably his last game, and he had some nice, coach will have stats for you, he had some nice games, but at the last game, he was blocking well, he was tackling well, uh, he, he was running his routes better and getting open. Um, he missed one pass, but then it shows you the confidence he had. He came right back and then caught a touchdown pass right after that, whereas most guys would have mentally checked out. He stuck out in there, stuck it out. And I look at Gabe as being one of our future leaders and captains of this football team. Man, what can you say about Tate? Um, you look at how much he's grown and how much he's matured and how much faster he got and how much of an improved athlete he is. Uh, he's, he was one of the original founders of this football program. Four years ago we started, he was a ninth grader, along with Dalton, the two, the two originals, I'd call them. And, you know, with Tate, he's one of the most reliable guys. He was our co-captain this year. He literally could play every position. That was our goal for him this year, to play center. He did that. So he played every position on offense and defense uh, for this football team. He could play it because he was so smart. He, he could not only play his primary position, which who knows where that would be. It could vary from week to week. But he would know everybody else's responsibility as well. Uh, we selected him this year as a captain for his leadership role, his dedication, his sacrifice, uh, his effort he put forth on the team. Uh, ended up being obviously one of our key leaders out there. Uh, when we asked him to kind of take over the quarterback responsibilities to free up Bryce's athleticism a little bit more, he did that willingly. And if you watch the Mesa game and our last game against Brethren, having him at quarterback made a huge difference. Tate's one of those guys I honestly believe is going to be a coach someday just because of his love for the game, his passion for the game, uh, and his knowledge of the game. Uh, what can you say about this kid? I guess is, you know, I started to coach him a little bit in baseball last year, so I got a glimpse of him. Uh, but it was only for a couple of weeks. But I liked what I saw, so I got a chance to see him uh, this year to play football. And what can you say about a guy like Jack Cook? He's every football coach's probably any coach's dream. Um, does what he, you ask him to do. Super coachable. Listens. Uh, refuses to make excuses for anything plays hurt almost to a fault where you can't tell how serious his injury is because as long as he can stand, he doesn't want to come off the field. So a tremendous competitor, tremendous athlete. Uh, this was only our first year of having him on the football team, but what a difference he made on offense and defense. And, boy, if we could clone guys like Jack Cook, uh, we'd have a heck of a team, any team, no matter what sport you're playing. Our new addition this year came from, I think, Fremont, played football over there. So it was interesting talking to Dylan before the season and during the season. He kind of brought a lot of knowledge, not a lot of experience. He came from a bigger school where he didn't get to play much. But in talking to him, he knows football. He was out there consistently at practice. You could always count on him being there as one of those guys. And an important scout team player for us because we expected him to be one of those guys that could play against us on offense. When we were on offense and play on our scout D and help our guys to improve more, uh, and he did that. He's, he's, he's learning the game. He improved, uh, and he will get his opportunity as long as he wants to continue to work hard, which I think he'll do. Uh, he'll be a great team asset in the future for us. This guy, you look at him, you don't think of your prototypical football player. He's kind of, he's good, a little bit, he's not your bigger guy. Uh, but he's got great quickness, and the most important thing he's got that every football player needs, he's got that toughness. And he uses that speed and toughness to play as hard as he can. And as he, this is his first year ever playing football, at least at this level, and you could see at every practice his confidence grow and his ability grow. And, and towards the end of the season, 
with the practice time he put in and the game times that he put in, he just got better and better. And we had more confidence in putting him out there and knowing that he could get the job done, especially on defense. He picked it up quickly. Uh, he's, he's low to the ground and he's quick and he can bust through those gaps real quickly. And he's a guy that we're looking forward to, especially again for next year, continuing to improve, bring that toughness to our team and translate that into a great season for the young man. How can you not love this kid? Um, he's kind of your old school country strong. He doesn't have any fancy workout equipment. Uh, doesn't go to a gym. Doesn't He can't hang out at the school and work out. This guy just go, does it the old fashioned way. Buckets of rocks, 20 minutes of sit-ups, and, and, and just just working out using just the natural things around him. And it's paid off because you look at him, he's strong, he's ripped, uh, extremely coachable, listens to everything you say, wants to learn, wants to do better. And when you tell TJ to go out there and make our offense better when you're playing scout D, he does that. He would bring the intensity level up of our team so much that there'd literally be almost fist fights during practice that we'd have to break up. But that's a good thing because it brings out the intensity in, in your teammates and it shows what they can do when they focus that energy uh, towards our opponents. So TJ was absolutely outstanding at doing that. Um, if, if he can just develop a little bit more confidence, which is what we want him to do and which he should do, uh, he will be a tremendous player because he's got great speed and he's got just that, that natural strength that literally can just throw bodies around when he wants to. So TJ was just an awesome guy to have part of our football team. Finally, after bugging him since his freshman year, got him to come out his junior year to play football. And if you saw the Ashley game, our first game that he ever played, you can see why I've been bugging him to come out since his freshman year. Uh, obviously, in coaching him in, in baseball and seeing him play basketball, I knew he was a natural athlete, uh, gifted kid, got good speed, just great arm, great athletic ability. Uh, what he just needed to do was see what this game of football, how he could translate those skills into this game of football. And I think, thankfully for us, he grew over the summer. Because of that, he decided, May running 5K isn't the best thing for him. So rather than sit around, he gave football a try. And I'm hoping we have him hooked because uh, his coach will put up the stats and show you he had tremendous numbers uh, for his first year ever playing. And the, the future is, is extremely bright and his potential is off the charts if he puts in the work for that. So we're, we're looking forward to great things from the, the big man that I can say now next year. Uh, the other part of the Griffiths brothers, which is great to say out there, we had the Ruiz brothers. We had the, uh, the Griffiths brothers out there. Zach was our other one, man. Um, if, if you look at the young man's hips and his legs, he, he's built to move tree trunks. And he did that with our opponents and our players. This, again, first year he, he was ever playing. And one of my favorite quotes after, uh, as Zach Plinett finished playing his first ever football game was, this is the most fun I've had ever playing any sport ever. And, and that says a lot. He unfortunately had some injuries that took away some of his game time experience, but he never lost that passion. And even when he went out there at the end and, and, and had a concussion, his biggest thing was letting the team down and getting back out there. So he's all about team. He's all about sacrifices. Obviously, being part of the Griffiths brothers tandem, he's got some natural athletic ability. He's got great hands. He wants to be a, a great tight end. And I can see him, again, if he continues to work at it and get better as far as his hands and, and knowledge and techniques in football, uh, having the Griffiths brothers next year as a tandem is going to be something special for us. Another one of those kids, second year playing, and we continue to put demands on him. He's a tremendously naturally gifted athlete. If you've seen him on the field, you know that. You've seen him play quarterback. You've seen him play on defense. Um, he's so gifted that it was, it was one of the reasons we moved him off quarterback this year was, at least for a couple games, was to get him more and utilize his skills more in the open field and his speed as a receiver. Uh, and so because we had... Tate that was able to fulfill that quarterback role, we were able to move Bryce with Jack in their backfield, and that gave us a lethal tandem because of his speed and athleticism. He's, he's one of the, the hardest guys to tackle in open field. He's a tremendous competitor. Uh, he, he hates to lose more than he loves to win. 
uh, hating to lose almost to a fault because he's so competitive, he's so hard on himself, he can get so angry that it can sometimes get in his, his head and affect his, his natural abilities. So our, our primary focus going forward for his second year ever playing football, again, he had a tremendous season. Uh, he, he's a key player for us. And going next year, what we want to be able to do is make sure that third year increase his confidence so that he can funnel all that competitiveness and that passion into maximizing his, his opportunities on the field and, and his contribution to what he can gift to us on the field. And if he does that, he's going to be something special. Um, he has, without a doubt, been our best kicker in our four-year short history. He's probably one of the best kickers I've seen in 20 years of coaching football. And uh, it, with, with his leg, and he's just doing it based on natural skill. If he can get some coaching on that leg, uh, I'll stand behind my statement that I've been saying all year to him. He's, he's the Division I kicking potential. Uh, there was a point during the season after practice where he kicked 48 out of 50 point after touchdowns, PATs, and field goals moving the ball back. 48 out of 50. And he should be pretty proud of the fact that he was our first kicker to kick a PAT and our first kicker ever to kick a field goal. So that says something special about the young man, the abilities that he has all over the field. We had to remind ourselves <clears throat> many times during the season uh, that this kid's only 13 years old. He's, he's a tremendous talent. He's already big. He's already strong. He's tough. He's smart. Um, he played one of the most demanding positions on a football team, 11-man or 8-man, doesn't matter, and that's the center position because of the tremendous responsibility. Not only did he have to snap, you know, shotgun, he had to go under center. Then he, when you snap, you got you to gotta worry about your blocking responsibilities. Uh, he was so talented. We put him on the other side of the football. He could play nose. He could play D-end. He could play linebacker for us. Uh, and again, you got to keep reminding yourself, the kid's only 13. So thinking about what he might be able to do in the future is, is absolutely scary. Um, it's kind of my, I don't want to put pressure on the kid or anything, but it's kind of my belief that if he continues to work hard in the offseason, getting stronger, getting faster, and working on his techniques, uh, he has the potential to be an All-State candidate uh, by the time he's a junior and senior, without a doubt. So uh, he's one of those guys that we can anchor this team on. During the offseason, I don't think you could find anybody that worked harder in the weight room to get stronger, was a, a mentor to our, all our players, young and old, uh, with Tate, one of the founding fathers of this football program. Um, tremendous athlete, strong, competitive, carried a reputation with him throughout the league and conference since his freshman year, regardless of the injuries that he's had or games that he had to miss, unfortunately. People knew about him. Uh, they, they prepared in coaching against him, and uh, he put fear into our opponents. And, and if you went against him uh, at full force, you'd understand that. Uh, he could put fear in a lot of people. Uh, one of the things that I admire about Dalton the most is, this year is when we had asked him, you know, because he had missed some practices and things, and because he wasn't getting the reps in the backfield that he wanted, there was one practice where we were just watch, watch, watching him block, and the coaches were discussing it and said, holy smokes, can you imagine this kid on the line? And so we asked Dalton, who's always been a skill position running back player, if he'd be willing to go on the line and block for us. And how can you ever forget his comment? He said, whatever's best for the team. And when he went out there for his first game to play on the offensive line for us against Misik, I mean, when he was in the game, uh, we made things happen. And then we were able to put him in that shotgun wildcat formation. And, and when he had the ball and ran, it always took about five or six guys to bring him down. Uh, he would play hurt. He'd play through pain. Uh, he would not want to come off that field to the point where it would tear him apart if he had to. So despite the injuries and, and, and unfortunate events that have happened to him, the times that he was out there will, will never be forgotten. Well, I've taught her since seventh grade, obviously seventh grade through her senior year. And without doubt, you know, one of the, the most talented students I've had. And she was able to take that, that talent that she had in the classroom. And this is the first time I ever coached her. I've seen her play other sports, but this is the first time we've ever coached her. I've seen her translate all those talent and skills in the classroom out onto the athletic field. And 
Obviously, she's not the biggest person on the football team, maybe 90 pounds wet or in full gear, maybe 100 pounds, but never backed down from anybody. She was our most consistent film watcher, always wanting to watch film and learn what we could do better, what our opponents were doing so she could prepare better. She'd stick around after practice, wanting to work on her blocking and tack tackling techniques. She would ask questions during practice about where to pay, play positions, how to play it, what technique to play it. Um, and to watch her improve throughout the year and get a chance to get in the game and, and get that feedback from her about what a great experience was for her. It made everything worth it. And, and what I've said to her and to Taylor as well is the, the, the role model that they've set forth for all future players, not just girls. Little girls will obviously look up to them and, and be in awe that they played football and they stuck it out. That, that's a no-brainer. But for any young kid to look at what her and Taylor were able to do, nobody would have gave them a shot that they would make it through a football season and play a guy's sport. But they not only did it, they excelled at it. Very coachable. They improved throughout the year. And, and they may have had, I hope they had a tremendous experience, but the coaches had a tremendous experience coaching them as well. All I can say is I just love the kid. How can you not? Um, eighth grader playing varsity football, and I don't care. You can say eight man, and, and, and we're you know division two, and, and, and uh, you know class D. It, it doesn't matter. This kid not only worked out with us since June, but would never, never, ever back down from a challenge. And like Cole, a lot of times you would look out there and forget. Hey, that he's only in eighth grade. He he could be a, a stud and be playing middle school football. And here he's playing on a varsity football program. And there were times when he would get picked up and thrown around, but it would just make him angrier. He'd come out there fired up and even more, uh, more willing to, to do whatever it took to sacrifice himself for the better of the team. And it's just funny because you look at him out there and he was always probably the smallest guy. And you're asking him to play one of the toughest positions in football, and that's on the offensive line. And he learned on some techniques. Coach was awesome in coaching him in some techniques and, and how to block bigger guys. And he was able to use those to his advantage. I mean, he started on the O-line for us. And he could start on the D-line for us. Uh, he worked so hard and, and just always improved. And one of my proudest moments for the young man is seeing him one week collapse after running our, our Monday boards in, in conditioning. And then the following week, encouraging a teammate not to quit and give up by saying, hey, if I can do it, you can do it, and we can get past this together. So how can you not be so proud of that young man? So next year he'll only be a ninth grader, but based on the experience he got this year, uh, I can't wait to see what he can do. I'd have to say Nathaniel is probably one of our, you know, we've got a lot of improved players, but for Nathaniel, this was his second year. Uh, he worked with us all summer long in improving his strength and conditioning. And you want to talk about conditioning. I kept joking around that it's a good thing the cross coach don't see him run because they'd want to steal him. He's a natural, gifted runner. I think he would be a tremendous cross runner. But good thing for us, his passion is in football, and he loves to play football. And it shows on the football field. Uh, last year was kind of a learning year for him. Small, skinnier, uh, but he always worked at learning the techniques, improving every practice last year. And now he got a little bit bigger, he got a little bit stronger this year, and it showed. Uh, and if you look at our defense, he's probably one of the defensive backs, not only did we have on this team, but I think one of the best defensive backs as far as coverage in this league. He could cover people, and the thing that he really improved on as we went throughout the year was tackling people, getting into position to make the tackles. Now, you know, a lot of times he got he just got blocked out because of his size. He's got going up against guys that are, you know, 50, 60 pounds heavier than him. But the, the thing you got to admire the most is he never backed down. He always got in the right position. He tried to do the right thing. Um, and going forward with his work ethic and how hard he works and how much he will improve, both mentally and physically, um, he's, he's going to be a tremendous force out there, not only on the defensive side of the ball, a corner for us, but as we transition him more onto the offensive side of the, uh, the ball as well. A couple times he was another one of those kids, so smart and knowledgeable of the game, we could last minute throw him in on the offense, either a split or a tail or wing. It didn't matter where you would put him. He would still know what position responsibilities were and how to play it and put forth an awesome effort for us.
you, Moses, follow him to the promised land. That's all you had to do. I think when we were evaluating our leadership roles and our core values for our team this year, um, when, when we looked at the things that we wanted as far as a package, what Lakers meant, the loyal, the accountability, the knowledgeable, the excellent, the resilient, the selfless, all of those things define what Q is. Um, he is a true captain and, and one that we, we really needed here this year for this team chemistry. And I, I think he is responsible for the, the great team chemistry and unity we had truly as one and as a family this year. Uh, because of what it brought to the table, that intensity, that passion, that, that willingness to sacrifice everything, to do whatever it takes, to work as hard as he can. Uh, he had a fire and intensity that, that we need and any fo successful football team needs. When, when the team needs to be held accountable, he, he would do it. And if it meant some butt chewing and screaming and yelling to get his team to focus, he would do it. And his teammates responded to that leadership. And so he, he will be uh, an asset that we tremendously miss. But fortunately, we had him at least for the last couple years, three years, including this year as our captain, co-captain with Tate, because the leadership and the things that he showed hopefully lays the groundwork for future captains. So we can look to them and say, hey, remember how Q led this team. That's what we expect out of you. So um, I've said it a million times. I won't let anybody date my granddaughter but Q can at least say hi to her once in a while. The, the second part of our, our, our lady tandem uh, this year, and it couldn't be, just like with Leah, more proud of her uh, for stepping into that, uh, that, that, that role of, of a challenge that would have been difficult for a lot of kids, let alone her playing football as a senior for her first time. And, and she was one of those first ones that came into my class last year in the spring and said, hey, I want to play football. Would you let me play football? And I said, of course. I mean, she's an athlete. She's big. She's strong. She's dedicated. She wants to learn. She wants to get better. She never made any excuses. She would play through pain. She would play hurt. Uh, and, and if she had to miss because she was sick or she just felt tremendously bad about it and, and, and tried to show up, even if she wasn't feeling the greatest and push herself through, I remember a couple practices, she was just feeling lousy and, and wanting to make, make it through. In the past, we've had players that would look for any excuse to miss a practice, and here she's looking for excuses not to miss a practice. So again, as with Leah, a lot of people, young, young players, boy or girl, doesn't matter, can look up to those guys as, as leaders for stepping out of their comfort zone and doing something that nobody would think that they could ever do or accomplish. And to see her out on the football field and in practice and our drills actually start to push people around and, and do a great job in football, regardless, boy or girl, doesn't matter. She did a great job as an athlete. So, again, it was our honor this year to have the opportunity to coach both those girls, tremendous kids. Boy, we missed him this year. Uh, because of the, the virus situation and things, I understood, you know, he couldn't come to practice even a little bit later like he did last year and help us out because he would you know, potentially carry something back to work. So the risk was too high. I get that. But even having him at the games, um, helping us make adjustments either on offense or on defense, just having his football knowledge and expertise out there was huge. Uh, we appreciate having him and his knowledge that he brings to the game. And I just hope that uh, he can despite Tate moving on, that he continues to be available to us and offer his ex expertise and experience because that's what makes us a better team. What, what can you say? He's one of the most fun guys to have on a football team. I love his laugh, his sense of humor. It, it never seems like uh, he's ever bummed out about anything. He always finds the, the bright side of everything and, and that that's kind of what I need as a coach out there because I'm always looking for, you know, I, I, I'm looking for perfection and things just to go perfectly. And he kind of brings us back down in perspective. He's uh, very great with, he's very good with the kids as far as coaching them the skills, but he's also just a fun guy to have around. Uh, if you're a player, you love to play for a guy like that. He's got a lot of knowledge, but he's just, the bottom line is he's just a, a fun guy. He's got a, a lot of knowledge and passion for the game. All his kids are athletes. He was an athlete. 
he, he volunteers his time to share that with our players so you know where his heart is. And he's, he's just a fun guy to have on this football team and love to have him continue. Uh, it, was, it was a great year. I enjoyed, uh, certainly enjoyed coaching as much as, as I have in the past. It was great to be, uh, be able to be with you, you guys and ladies every single day. Uh, there's, there's so much to say about the season because this was, I think we can say this was the most successful season in Bear Lake football history. So we, we really, I think we've really brought the program a long way from from uh, where it was back when it started four years ago. Uh, a lot of that's a tribute to our seniors. You guys did a great job this year in terms of leading. Uh, certainly Tate and uh, Q, you guys were, were great leaders. I thought you were, you were great captains. Uh, we had talked about, about the fact that you two had learned from the past in terms of things that were good and things that were bad and, and how to bring that forward. And I think the two of you were able to, to bring that together and keep the team going and, and keep us focused, even on days when we weren't focused very much, uh, when nobody wanted to practice or when, when things just weren't going right. Uh, you guys had that ability to do that. And, uh, and then the rest of you seniors just kind of fell in line with that and, and helped, helped to support them. Uh, but I think the, looking forward, I think our future is, is really bright. Uh, we, we certainly need to find some more players in there as well. Uh, so certainly any, any type of recruiting that you guys can do of the younger classes would be great. Um, but, uh, but we've come a long way as a football team, as a football program. Just the fact that we made the playoffs, uh, COVID or not, you know, two and four, uh, even if one was a forfeit, I think that we would have beaten Baldwin anyways. So, uh, so we can chalk that up as, as a win as well. But that Ashley game was, uh, really was a turning point, I think, in, in this football program's uh, uh, progression and, and our history. So I certainly look forward to, to next year, seeing what, what holds for us is in the future. Uh, keep working. I think that made a big difference was we had, we know we had people in the weight room uh, every day, well maybe not every day, but most of the days, uh, when you guys could get in there. We had guys here since, I think, what was it, June 9th or something like that. You guys were here every day, and it showed. It made a difference. And so the more that we work, the more that you guys are here, the more commitment that we get from it, the better football team we're going to be. And uh, so going forward, I just say keep it up, and, uh, and I look forward to, to next year. First of all, I love the young lady. Uh, she's like a daughter to me. Uh, but more importantly than that, she's one of the best coaches that I've ever coached with. Bar none, hands down, none. I'm not saying that for any other reason. If anybody knows me, you know I can't BS anybody. It's the absolute truth. Uh, her talent and, and, and knowledge of football is, is just a, a tip of the iceberg of what she can do. She's the complete package. She can keep things organized. She can handle multiple tasks. She's phenomenal with film. She's phenomenal with learning the game and, it, and being creative with the game. Um, she can call a game as good as anybody I've seen. When you saw our team out there and when things clicked, when we didn't make mistakes and she could call her sequence and the strategy, I would not want to coach against her because you never know what she was going to bring. Um, so all I want to, I want to say about the young lady is it's been an honor, honor for me to coach with her for four years. Obviously, I'd like to coach for, with her for however long I can, um, but we also want the best for her. And with her talents and skills, I'm also one of those people that want to share and brag and show her off. So all I'm looking for for this young lady is her first opportunity to show any other coaches or team what she's capable of doing either at another high school at a higher higher level, at a college at a higher level, or eventually even in, in the NFL. She's got the capabilities, the talent, the skills, the passion, the knowledge, everything that you can think of, she's got. And once somebody sees that, they're going to steal her from us. But we will always be so proud of her because of where she came from. And then I can say, in lying, and I'd have to confess to Coach B about this afterwards, but I taught her everything she knows, which we know is a lie, but I just love her to death, and, and I wish nothing but the best for her. And, and I hope that players that have played with her over these past four years will appreciate the tremendous talent 
that she is, and I think they do. You talk to all our players; they know how smart she is, how talented she is, and 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 I and I and I just re hope they realize that playing with her as a coach, offensive coordinator, was one of the best experiences they could have. And one of the things, and she probably didn't notice this, but I can tell you, I noticed this. It was at our last game, and she's out there flashing all her signals for the offense and calling the numbers. And I remember one of the referees, the umpires, turning around and sitting there looking at her and just staring at what the heck is she doing. And then he turned around and looked at our team, and they're out there, and they're looking at her and understanding everything, and then they go ahead and run a play. Just so you all know, that was all her. And just as he was in awe, anybody that knows her will be in awe. So uh, we'll hang on tight to her as long as we got her. We'll respect her that we have her. But the, I, I can't wait to see what the future holds for the young lady. All right, so I just got to give you guys a big congratulations on a very successful season. Um, I know we had a lot of fun. We made a lot of memories. Uh, we crushed some goals, crushed some opponents, and, and just had a lot of fun together doing it. And I know we didn't get to all of our goals on our list, but we had a goals list, so that was a goal in itself, I think, um, just to be able to have things that we were working for this season. So I was super proud of you guys for putting that list together and checking some of those things off. And the things we didn't get to this year, that gives Team 5 something to strive for all summer long and something to press for for next year. Uh, secondly, I just owe all of you guys a big thank you for allowing me to be your coach. Um, the game of football has given me a lot of opportunities, especially in the last year or so, um, but none of them would be possible if I wasn't your coach first. So I just have to thank you guys for putting up with my crazy ideas and sideline charades and my bad jokes and allowing me to be the terrible scout QB and all those sorts of things, um, giving me honest feedback during the game and practice and just for being a great group of guys and girls to coach. Um, so thank you for that, and I can't wait to see what Team 5 does next year. Uh, I'm, I'm going to announce who the most spirited is, and the most spirited goes to the, the guy who, who kept us going when, uh, when things didn't look good, never got down, was always positive, gave a lot of energy to the team, uh, was always in there and, and, and telling us, let's keep going, let's keep going, never quit. Kept playing until the end. Uh, and I think the, the best player, and, and the coaches and I, we, we, uh, we agreed on this, that the best, uh, the one who was the most spirited was Jack. Uh, you, you put your heart and soul into this team. You, for playing for one year, you'd think that you'd play forever, the, that, uh, uh, the way that you played. You never stopped playing whenever you would always say to me, "Don't take me out, coach. Don't take me out, coach." Even when we were, even when uh, when we wanted to get other players in there, because you wanted to play, you still had more things to to, to do. And uh, when you got hurt, uh, you never even told us, even though we saw you limping or we saw you holding your arm. Uh, you gave everything that you could, and uh, and it really showed. It really, you were an example to the team, so that uh, when we talk about never quit, never die attitude, certainly you showed that. Uh, you showed that Laker pride, that Laker ability to continue to play uh, regardless of what, goes on, what was going on. So uh, congratulations, Jack, on being the most spirited. All right, I have the honor of announcing this year's winner of the Sportsmanship Award. And when we as coaches talk about the Sportsmanship Award, we always look for the person or the player who is not only a good sport to their own teammates and always encouraging them, but also encouraging and supporting the other teams and our opponents. Um, this person is a person that hits really hard, uh, makes a big tackle, and then picks the opponent right back up. Um, always rooting for teammates and being a good sport and always handling themselves with class on and off the field, um, conducting themselves in a way that's worthy of being a Laker. And so this year's Sportsmanship Award goes to Q. One of the things that I'm most proud of in coaching any team at Bear Lake or any team I've ever coached is, are, are they smart athletes? Do they work hard in the classroom? And so one of the most important awards to me, especially, is the Scholar Athlete Award because it shows that somebody can maintain outstanding grades in the classroom, work hard in the classroom, and then meet for three hours after school and on weekends and work hard and, and, and be part of a team as well. 
and that takes uh, a tremendous amount of work balancing all those responsibilities. So maintaining good grades is extremely important. My goal is to get a team that's an all-state academic team uh, at, 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 at the state level for academics and scholarship or scholar awards. So this is an award that it means a lot to me. Uh, it's, it was tough this year because we had some, some really smart people on this team and it kind of came down to the wire so we had to, we had to pull out the, the absolute to the third digit numbered here to find out who won this award. And I'm very proud to say that our Scholar Athlete Award this year goes to Leah Nelson. Uh, this, uh, this award is the most improved and uh, in order to be the most improved, first of all, you had to come from somewhere to get to somewhere, right? So uh, the most uh, usually the most improved was somebody who maybe at the beginning didn't have great expectations, but, but then uh, decided that they were going to try to do more. I, I, I often think of, of my own daughter when she won most improved in cross country. She became really determined that she was going to be a better cross country runner her freshman year in high school. And so between her eighth grade and 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 uh, freshman year in high school she ran every day she was at practice whenever there was practice uh, she did those things that was necessary and it, and it showed and the same thing with this individual this individual was committed to to becoming a better player committed to saying I'm gonna do what is necessary because I need to be out on that field and I need to be a better player and uh, and there's a way for me to do it and uh, and so the most improved player is, is, is a, a Nathaniel and so we I don't think that there was much doubt about that, about the work that you put in during the summer and even going back to last year. I remember seeing you at a basketball game and, and you talking about how you, you were lifting while, during basketball season and, uh, and your mom telling me how much weight you would put on then. And then even the, even the thought of uh, one day in practice, you said to, to uh, Coach Probst and me, uh, you know, this year all conference, maybe, maybe next year all state. You know, those are those are the things that we that we we want from from our players is to have those goals. And you had those goals, you achieve them, and and certainly there's there's more work that you can be done. But the the work it has shown. We we can see that you have put in a lot of work, and you're an example to the rest of the team. This is what happens when you work hard. When you work hard, you become a better player. You become a better tackler. You become a better coverer. Uh, certainly, as I was coaching you, I you and I were were together a lot in in coaching. Uh, during the, during practice, and uh, you could just see that the footwork was better, the desire to go after the ball was better, the ability to uh, to cover somebody. You got better, not just the first day of practice, but even even the last day of practice, you were better better all around. So certainly, thanks, Nathaniel. We we thank you for the work that you put in, and uh, congratulations on being the MIP, the most improved player. All right, the other award I have to give out tonight is the MVP award. And this one is, as an offensive coordinator, is, is a lot of fun to do um, because this person is very versatile on the field. You can put him in a lot of places, use him in a lot of ways, and the same goes for defense. This is a player that we can put in just about any position and they'll get the job done. Um, so the MVP this year is Tate, and we just really want to thank Tate for his commitment to the team. And part of his value is him being willing to play all different positions on offense and all different positions on defense and not complaining about it and just going out there and being diligent enough to know the techniques that he needs to do, being aware in practice of what's going on, and just getting all those things done. And that's a huge value as a coach, and I hope that his teammates see the value in that as well. So congratulations, Tate, on being this year's MVP. Obviously, we, because of our reduced schedule, we couldn't play all of our conference teams. Uh, you know, we didn't play Manistee Catholic, we didn't play Marion. Uh, so it's kind of difficult for coaches to judge what their other athletes could do. So this year, more than others, we had to rely on statistics, just black and white paper, what did the stats show. And, uh, you know, so with Bear Lake this year, what we had to do is, is look at, as all, all, all our coaches did, is look at the players and think, as far as conference nominations, based on our statistics, based on how they played, uh, and, and how our teams that we did play look at them and how the teams that we, how we stacked up against the teams we didn't play, we had to come up with conference nominations of people we think deserve those all-conference nomination awards. 
and we were able to do that. Uh, and so I'd like to announce our, our second team, Conference Awards. Um, first one would go to a guy who's played this, uh, this, this game for the first time since Pee Wee, I think it was, and I don't even know what position he played at Pee Wee, but he came out this year after pestering him and pestering him and pestering him since his freshman year, trying to thank God he grew enough where he couldn't run cross anymore. Uh, we finally were able to talk him to coming out and playing and what a spectacular job he did. And this wouldn't be too hard an argument because our opponents would scout against him. If you watched our brethren game, they put one of their best athletes on him to shut him down. Uh, so I think uh, without question, he's got the stats to back it up and the future is extremely bright. But I think uh, he definitely deserves this award. Uh, second team tight end award goes to Jake Griffiths. All right, our, our other second team uh, nomination uh, was, was a young man who's been with us for almost the entire length of the program um, and an extremely valuable member of this team. As a matter of fact, hey, we'll just say it, captain of the team. And without him being able to play multiple positions on the offensive line, including getting a chance in the backfield, uh, you know, we, we couldn't have done all of the things we did. He was the anchor, the guy that we could count on. So this year, uh, last year he got nominated for a second team uh, all-conference on defense. This year he deserves the second team all-conference on offense this year. So Quentin Ruiz, thanks, man, for all you did for us on that old line and anchoring us down. This one, this guy is uh, so valuable to us that it's hard to fit him in any one particular category. When a guy can play every position on the football field, and he actually played every uh, position on the football field for us, uh, it's hard to put him into a category. But there's no question uh, his value to the team was, uh, was, was tremendous. And uh, it, looking at him for an all-conference award, he has the stats in a lot of different positions. But I think if you really look at it and what he meant to this team, and if the teams that played us would see us, uh, there'd be no question about it. But our second team nomination for all-conference for offensive skill position athlete uh, would be Tate Altman. First team nominations, I, I think uh, the teams we played wouldn't argue with this, uh, teams we didn't play. All we'd have to do is look at the stats and compare those stats to the other teams and, and it would be kind of a no-brainer. Uh, our first team all-conference award on the defensive side goes to our team's leading tackler, the guy that could play a linebacker, could play at the end, could play at the corner, could play just about everywhere. But if you look at a tackle, you watch all our films, he was pretty much in on every tackle. So I'm proud to nominate and award first team defense all-conference award to Jack Cook. Our, our, our second first conference nomination award on the defensive side of the ball again has to go to the D-line. I'm very proud to say he was recognized as second team all-conference on the defensive side of the ball uh, last year and he deserves to be recognized as first team all-conference this year uh, based on his effort, his attitude, where he could play, D-end, D-tackle, the linebacker, uh, even put him in coverage a couple times, uh, second leading tackler on the team. Congratulations for moving up to, from second team all conference to first team all conference, the Q. This one, uh, I think, not only uh, would be an easy nomination for all conference, all region, uh, given more opportunities in the game, I think it would have the potential to be all state. Uh, yeah, I think if you look at what this young man can do with his leg, uh, at both punting and kicking, it's tremendous. Uh, and he's done all that just based on natural abilities, very little input from the coaches because it's not like we've got a lot of experience with kickers. We kind of let him do his own thing. Uh, I mentioned this before, out of 50 PAT and field goals attempt in practice one time, he made 48 out of 50. So I think it's a no-brainer. I, I think there's no contest. Uh, he was the first person to kick a field goal for our football team. Uh, he's the first person to kick a PAT in our four-year program. And I think if you, you, you look at the, the leg that this young man has, all conference, all region, potentially all state in the future is a no-brainer. But I'm proud to announce first team, all conference specialist position, Bryce Hartless.